You would think so, but looking at the volatility numbers, that's not the case. Um, at the end of last week, we saw the VIX, that's the volatility index of the S&P 500, touch a four-year low. Uh, now, you'd think that running into this political uncertainty, um, these new political figures, the switch from monetary to fiscal policy, you'd think that would be the reverse. But actually, I think investors are actually finding underlying corporate earnings are quite good, and they're finding a lot of comfort in dividend flows. So actually, equity markets have been a lot less volatile uh, it's almost the reverse of 2008, when the financial markets were the problem that unsettled the real economy. This time round, the real economy and the politics is uncertain, but the financial markets are relatively predictable. So the political situation that we've seen unfold in recent days isn't impacting the financial markets? It, it is, modestly. The volatility index has ticked up a bit. We saw a little bit of a sell-off in markets, but you know, if someone had told you uh, a year ago that this extraordinary political picture would unwind and then looking ahead we've obviously got elections in the Netherlands in, in March, we've got April in France, we've got September in Germany, we've almost certainly got an Italian election on top of the Brexit negotiations and yet equity volatility is close to a five-year low. This is your first visit to Gibraltar. What's your impression of Gibraltar's financial situation and industry and its ability and role in the wider world? Firstly, just from looking at the economic data that you, you, you publish, I, I think um, the 35,000 or so people here must be incredibly proud of the economic numbers that they've generated. I mean, uh, my broad um, uh, analysis of your numbers shows a very attractive growth picture. I think it's encouraging to see a territory like a crown territory like this manage to access both the European world and the global world and turn that into a very effective financial services centre that punches well above its weight. Now of course you've got the challenges of Brexit but as I've learnt in the, the last 24, 48 hours this is just one of the challenges that Gibraltar has had to, to battle through in the last 30 or 40 years and um, I, I think um, it's rather an example of the focused thinking and economic development for the rest of the country. What about the seeming certainty of losing membership of the single market and a question mark over access? My hunch is that after the filing of Article 50, things go a little bit quiet. You're going to be in the midst of this very tumultuous European electoral cycle. And I think what really is needed is six or nine months where the technocrats get together and work the numbers out. We at this uh, seminar looked at the actual financial numbers and, of course, what we're talking about in terms for the UK overall of net contributions to the EU is really very small, less than half percent of GDP. So for once, I think this is a battle of ideas, it's a, it, it's a battle of jurisdiction, it's a battle of politics. I don't think it's a battle of money, and I think that's encouraging. And I would expect that the real hard numbers are going to come out in 2018, and it wouldn't surprise me if a slightly more benign outcome is possible than what markets are discounting today.